getting back here? Did, did Will contact you? Did, did, did you apply for um, We had mutual uh, contacts during the course of the season. Uh, I was obviously bound by a contract there uh, at the 49ers, so had to finish that season out. But uh, as soon as the opportunity presented itself, I was a Gamecock again, and I'm glad to be back. I can assure you that. What was the biggest thing that you were able to see last year on film that you wanted to at least implement to change the culture <laughs> around here? Well, you know, uh, I think that Coach Dillman uh, and our players have done a great job this summer of becoming more mobile, uh, more explosive, our ability to change direction. That was a concern, just our overall athletic ability. Uh, when you look at the matchup that we have week in and week out, uh, we had to get more athletic And Coach Dillman and our players. You know, they stayed here in May made that commitment. So I, I've seen that already thus far uh, in camp that we're moving around a lot better. How much have you noticed the change? Quite a bit. I mean, that's why I obviously recognized it. And those players and Coach Dillman and his staff need to be recognized for that because, you know, that work they put in those that May, June, and July is what we needed to uh, get us up to where we need to be to compete at this level. How are you going to handle your left tackle situation going into to the game in a couple of weeks? Well, I mean, we're going to uh, probably, you know, start Malik right now at this time. You know, Dennis has uh, been inconsistent, which you would expect from a new player. At times he flashes like the guy that we expect him to be. Like a lot of players, you know, a lot of players flash. And the thing is, is who can consistently, consistently play for 75 snaps, 80 snaps. And when you're going fast and it's tired and it's hot out, those kind of things, is who can uh, hone in on the details that you need to play this position. Because this is a detail-oriented position. Uh -huh. How do you feel? If you, if you could choose, would you pick NC State and that defensive line for your first time out, or would you rather be a little bit probably, slower going in. No, I mean, I mean, you got to line up and play. I mean, those guys have done a good job. I mean, they've done a good job recruiting. They've got a good defensive line. Every pro scout that comes in here talks about uh, all those defensive linemen that they have and those kind of things. And what a great matchup because really that's what we're going to face when we play in the SEC. It's going to be the same same style of front. So, you know, it's going to be just to kind of a preview for what we can expect to come up uh, during the conference game season. Elf, when you return, did you bring the pink feather boa back with you? Uh, I don't necessarily have it out and exposed, but uh, <laughs> I'm hoping that we don't have to return that. I hope I'm beyond that point, but I wouldn't uh, hold anything out. Jake said that your interior offensive line really does a good job of protection. And um, what are you seeing from those three, four guys that you're rotating in there? Well, you know, I think the thing is, is we always talk a lot about pocket integrity. And uh, I think Coach Roper and Jake do a good job of schematically getting rid of the ball quick. So uh, the interior pocket is a, is a premium. And that also helps the tackles because, you know, the, the ends like to obviously get upfield. But they've done a good job. You know, Donnell, Allen, uh, Corey Helms, those guys, uh, their arrow's up right now. And they're uh, playing hard every day. They're pretty consistent in what they do. They got tremendous work ethic. They're detail oriented. They're heavy handed guys. And that's the kind of guys you got to have in there. How much of that starting five is still in flux? Or do you have a pretty good idea who you're rolling out there on September 2nd? I think I, you know, we probably have a pretty good idea. You know, but you know, the thing is, is we got to keep challenging guys. I want to find eight guys. I want to find eight guys that can play. You know, who's the first tackle in the game? Who's the first guard in the game? Who's the, sec who's the next center in the game? Who's the third center in the game? And that's what we're trying to do right now is, is find out who those guys are. And one day it might be one guy, and another day it might be another guy. So we're just trying to get some consistency in our group. Uh, amongst the top eight or ten players. If you can get, I've never been anywhere where you have ten, but that'd be great. <laughs> but we're looking at trying to get eight right now that can play at any given time. How good is it to have a guy like Zach who, who's moved around from left guard to right tackle and even played some center on occasion? Zach, Zach has uh, a lot of flexibility. You know, he's played center, he's played guard, he's obviously played tackle. Uh, the thing is, is you just have to keep, uh, you know, keep pushing Zach, you know, because uh, right now sometimes he doesn't have competition exactly where at the level it needs to be because of inconsistencies of the guys behind him. So I have to constantly keep a foot on him and make sure that he knows that he's not entitled to anything. But he still looks comfortable at right tackle. He's doing, right a, he's doing a good job at times, you know. He still needs to be more consistent, and those are the detailed things. But he, he, one thing about Zach, he's very coachable. He responds to coaching. He responds to hard coaching. And I think he likes when I yell at him. I think he, re he really does. I think he likes to see how high he can get my blood pressure. So <laughs> I said, hey, as long as you take care of my kids and family, if something bad happens, that's fine. How did 
does Dennis Daly fit in terms of the, that athleticism you talked about wanting earlier? He's got left tackle uh, ability. He's, he's obviously he's flashes left tackle ability. Uh, you know, it, it's it's a consistency thing. Uh, sometimes when you get tired, the other thing is it's a new offense for him. So he's learning a lot, and we ask a lot of our offensive linemen. You know, we change protections. Uh, we change directions and, and who we're working to, games, twists, you know. So it's not, uh, it's not the easiest thing for those guys when they come in new like that and then being able to think at split second. And sometimes there's no nonverbal communication. It's just understood that we're, we're, we're working for these guys here, and however it unfolds, we have them. Was that why Malik is ahead of him? Because he's obviously been here. Malik already. has some experience. But Malik, right now, Malik consistently plays harder than him on a consistent basis. And that's Malik plays hard. That's something Gunn will play hard. You know, the thing is, is uh, he just got to continue. You have to keep pushing him, too. You know, all these guys, you have to keep pushing them. And that's my job as a coach is to make sure that no one ever feels like they're uh, grandfathered in or entitled to any position. You know, sometimes we talk about this guy's the best O lineman. That, that depends on what day. You know what I'm saying? So a lot of times we like to say, well, this guy's the best O-lineman. No, he may, the other guy was the best O-lineman. We've got a group of guys that are pushing to be the best O-lineman day by day, and that's why we give out an offensive lineman of the day. And if we looked at who we gave out as offensive lineman of the day thus far through spring practice, you'd be surprised at who they are, follow me, because we have higher expectations of certain people than we do others. How much does great quarterback play aid in offensive It's a line? premium. It's a premium. Great backs. Uh, great quarterback play, great running backs can make offensive linemen uh, look special. I think that's why it's so important. You know, last time I was here, me and Jay put a lot of effort into trying to recruit Marcus Lattimore because I knew how special that I was going to be, and you guys saw the results of that. But the point is, is great quarterback play, uh, great play calling, uh, creative. You know, Rope does a great job getting rid of football, constantly changing protections, changing the dial on a defense so they can't hone in on a thing. And those are the kind of things you got to do to be a good football team. Are you comfortable with putting Chandler in there at backup center, or would you maybe look at Corey Helms? Uh, Chandler, Corey Helms would be one of those two guys. And uh, depends on how I feel about the next guard in the game. So you have to evaluate it. You're like, well, if you're going to put your best five out there, is your second, is your next guard in the game better than Chandler, or is Chandler better than your next guard? Well, depending on what day you ask me that question, I could give you two different answers. But that's something that we'll have to figure out here in the next two weeks. How your, much does it help you having the two seniors like Allen and Corey? Allen and middle? Corey have been tremendous. Uh, you know, they're consistent. They work hard. Uh, you know, they're leaders of our group. There's no question they're leaders of our group. They're the hardest working guys. They push through. They hold each other accountable. They hold the rest of the guys in the group accountable. And, you know, they step in. I bounce ideas off them. I want to know how their brain, what, how their brain sees it. How does this hit your brain? I'll ask them before I make a final decision on how we're going to call something or the language that we're going to use to communicate quickly when the defense changes the pitcher. I'll ask them because I trust them. They got game experience and they're the ones playing. Just because I say something doesn't mean it hits those young kids' brains the same way it hits my brain. It's got to be the fastest way it hits your brain so that way we can get the job accomplished. With your first two games away from home, how important is it to get that work with the crowd noise simulators to make sure that you have all the calls on uh, on point? There's no doubt. You, I mean, you can't, you can't simulate the crowd noise in the SEC. Uh, a lot of loud stadiums, uh, a lot of places to play, you know, especially beginning of the year. Everybody's excited. Everybody thinks they're a, a contender. So uh, everyone will be revved up for football season, just like the Gamecocks will. With, uh, with, Mal with Malik and Dennis and Sidarius before you guys moved him, it seemed like you, you guys, when you look for left tackles, go for people with kind of the highest ceilings and sort of then try to build that consistency. What, what goes into that philosophy? Well, Sidarius is a guy that, you know, we haven't talked about that still has left tackle ability. Mm -hmm. The thing is, is I'm trying to get him to, be able to play some guard, too. Mm -hmm. So, and he's done some good things at guard at times. It's just predicated on, predicated on what day it is. Mm -hmm. But he has done some good things at guard, and I think he's got a future at guard. Uh, but it's not, it's not, you know, he could be the next left tackle in the game, too. Mm -hmm. Eric, a lot of similarities and differences between your first time here and now. It seems like Coach Burry or Coach Muschamp might be. A, there's a, a lot, there, there's a lot of differences, you know, just from the uh, cosmetically. Um, you know, I think uh, obviously all the Gamecocks and the commitment from everybody here at the university to change this place. Uh, you know, the indoor, you know, the last time I was here, the indoor we went to, you guys know where that is, <laughs> you know. So a lot of things have changed. The Doty was just being built the last time I was here. Uh, you know, I think all coaches, I've been very fortunate at a, at a, I used to say a young age, I'm not young anymore, but I've been very fortunate to be around a lot of great football coaches. And there's a lot of things that make each one of them special. 
make each one of them unique. And, uh, you know, I've been impressed with all of those guys. I've been extremely impressed with Will Muschamp. I love his blue collar mentality. Uh, if I didn't know better, I'd think his dad was a steel worker and grew up like my dad did. You know, a tough guy, likes to work hard, has tremendous passion for the game of football, uh, will not be outworked. And uh, an honest and a forthright guy, tells you the way it is. I just, I just love guys like that, and I'm fortunate to be a part of his staff. Who are your most decorated offensive linemen in the league? What's that? Your most decorated offensive linemen. I can't reveal that information. That'd be giving away <laughs> too much stuff. But it's not, it's not who you think it is. Yeah. <laughs> How about That's that? Uh, I, I, I can't tell you all. <laughs> Give me 20 bucks. <laughs> you got to pay for that kind of info, right, Finker? <laughs> huh? Tell him, Finker, you got to get the cash up for that, baby. <laughs> Eric, you were, uh, you were obviously came from the 49ers. You see what's going on with Colin Kaepernick, a guy you probably knew a little bit. Do you feel he deserves a chance to play something? You know, I think that's a, uh, obviously a difficult situation because, you know, I, I see things from a different perspective. I was there. I know it went on. You know, a lot of times things uh, are, you know, exaggerated in the media about what went on and what took place, what's important to each individual. I think everyone has their own right there. You know, I think it is uh, definitely uh, something very awkward or uh, – to look at when you think it, that this guy does, is not on a football team somewhere. But, you know, the thing is, is I'm not in the National Football League anymore. Uh, I'm here at the Gamecocks with the SEC, and I got my own sandbox that I got to take care of. And my sandbox is full right now. <laughs> Thank you. All right, you guys are awesome.